Good morning. Good morning. My name is Timothy Bullard. I'm one of the pastors and teachers here at Coratiz Hope Ministries. Thank you for logging on this morning to uh to get this word. I just before I start off, I just wanna uh, I just wanna pray that we can dive right into this word. Lord, I thank you for um for the opportunity to be able to to teach your word as I decrease, please increase. I pray that this word can help somebody. I pray that it can land where it needs to land, it can go where it needs to go, and it can touch whoever it needs to touch there, God. Um, please, uh, please show up in this word. And I thank you for who you are in Jesus' name. And, and I pray, Lord, and most importantly there, God, I pray that this word can lead somebody to you. I pray that they can research this word. I pray they can go to the Bible for themselves. Lord, I pray that they can become a doer of the word and not just a hero only. Lord, I pray that the people can want to know your word and understand your word and apply your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The title of my message today is Do Christians Really Change? Do Christians Really Change? You know, that's a... Uh, you know, it's interesting because I've been thinking about change lately. You know, do we really change as Christians? And I'm speaking to the Christian people, the people who, who God is in your life, you know the Lord, you won't fire for God. But do we really change? Do our heart really change? You know, this is one scripture that's often quoted. You hear the scripture all the time. I'm going to read this right here. I'm coming out of 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now, we heard this scripture all the time. Therefore, the old has passed away. The new has come. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. But that's my question. If we're, if we're Christians and we're new in Christ... Why do, our, why do we still act the same? Why do some Christians still act the same? Why do some Christians still act the same? Why do we still do the same things that we do? Knowing that we're, we're supposed to be. It says it right here. The, the, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If the new has come, why do we still act the same? Why do, why do Christians still think the same? This is a good question to ask. I mean, do we really change? Now, let me break this down for uh, 517. I do believe we do change because once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you do, you do change. Your heart should change. I like this right here, 517. It says, new creation, the redemption of a people who now live for Christ by living for others, affected by the power of the Holy Spirit and the death of Christ. Is the beginning of the new creation that was destined to come amid this evil age. This new creation is also be the beginning of Israel's final restoration from God's judgment in the exile. So, so once you get saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Yes, change occur. Your heart change. If you turn with me in your Bible to Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 26, it also speaks about change. It says right here, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and be careful to obey my rules. So this is God saying right here in Ezekiel 36, 22. God is basically saying, you know, I like this. Let me break this down. It says God's, initial, God's initiative moves from ex external to internal with the gift of a new heart and a new spirit. The outer purification will be no use without the inner disposition to live rightly before God. Do you live rightly before God? Has your heart changed? Yes, your heart changed, but are you changing? 
Or are you still set in your ways? You know, a lot of people get older. We set in our ways. We, we, we the same person that we was before we got saved. You know, this is in the church now. A lot of saved people in the church that still have the same habits. Some people still mean. Some people still, you know, you got the same issues that you have. You know, that stuff didn't fall off yet. But, but here's the thing. After a while, it should, you should change. You know, why do you think the Bible constantly talks about showing people how to act? It seems like the Bible started talking about etiquette. You know, showing people how to act, or a way of life. Hmm, you got to act a certain way. That's what it seems like the Bible start, start talking about when they mention in, in these books. I just was looking up the definition of etiquette. So it seems like the Bible... I mean, let me look that up because this is interesting. This is interesting right here. Let me look up the definition of etiquette. You know, we get saved. We have a new heart. The Holy Spirit is in us. But now we got we to gotta look like we saved. But how do you look like you saved? You look like you saved by the way you act. You look like you saved by the way you love. You look like you saved by how you think. Your thinking should change. Something should be different about you. Right? Let me just look up this definition of etiquette. Etiquette meaning the customary code of polite behavior in society or among members of a particular professional profession or group. So etiquette, how you act in society. You know, it should be a difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. Something should be different about you. You know, turn with me back to, to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Remember, it says, Therefore, if anyone that is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Be, behold, the new has come. Now, what I like about this scripture right here, it says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Hold on one second. One second. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Hmm. Just bear with me. I'm trying, trying to think. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 5, 9. All right. Turn back up to 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Now, I like this right here because Paul says something very interesting. Our heavenly dwelling. That's the title of the chapter. We're still in 5. It says, uh, I like what Paul says. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We know that. But I love... Yes, we are of good coverage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. I like verse nine. So whatever we, so whenever, so whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. How do you please God? You please God by the way you act. It says Paul lives his entire life in light of a hope that his actions will bring delight to God day by day. Do your actions bring delight to God day by day? It is possible for Christians to please or displease God in their daily actions. But Ephesians 5, 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. What, is, what the will of the Lord is. Colossians 3, 20. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. You know, part of pleasing the Lord is a change of behavior, is acting right. Hebrews 13, 21. Equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Look, the, it's how you act. Is it pleasing in God's sight? Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So this is Paul saying in verse in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 9, it says, look, whether I'm at home or away, we make it an aim to please him. Do you make it an aim to please God through your behavior? Or you just act any old kind of way? Or you just had that mindset, you know, I'm setting my ways. This is me. I'm setting my ways. <laughs> I'm not changing. I'm setting my ways. Paul also, I love this because Paul, he says right here in 2 Corinthians 5, Nah, he said he'd make it an aim to please him, but Paul also fears displeasing God. 
Look what Paul says, 2 Corinthians 5, 11. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others, but we are but we are no to God. Hold up. 2 Corinthians 5, 11. It says, 2 Corinthians 5, 11. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade, we persuade others, but what we are is known to God. He says, what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. He says, look, what I am is known to God. Listen, I do not want to displease God by the way I act. That's huge. That, that, is, that is huge right here. Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom... You were sealed for the day of redemption. Are you grieving the Holy Spirit by your behavior? The way you act? Are you? Are you grieving the Holy Spirit? By the way you act? You know, but how do we change? You know, Paul even wrestled with change over here in the book of Romans. Paul even wrestled with that. You know, you know the Bible, he, you know, when Paul set up these churches, he also left instructions on the code and conduct of a Christian. Mm -hmm. This is how you're supposed to act as a Christian. This is the code and conduct. This is how you carry yourself. He, he even set this up in, in the household. Husbands love your wives. Wives respect your husband. He says it right here. Children... Obey your parents. You know, etiquette. You know, when you go to work or, or when you go out in the community, do people recognize that God is with you? Do, they, do people recognize that you know God, that you know Jesus? Do they see that on you? You know, Paul even recognized this, and I love this about Paul. He, he, he explained this perfectly clear. Romans chapter, chapter 7, Paul says, Romans chapter 7, verse 15, Paul says, For I, I do not understand my own actions. Look, Paul, even a minute, yo, I, I got issues. I do not understand my own actions. For I, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Have you ever been there before? Be like, oh, I keep doing what I hate, I'm not doing what I want. 16 says, Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law. That is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So Paul said, listen, it's the sin that dwells in me. This is the reason why I'm doing it. Verse 18, for I know that nothing good dwells in me. Paul even admitted, listen, no, there's nothing good that dwells in me. This is what Paul is saying. There's nothing good that dwells in me. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verse uh, verse 18. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. He says, for I have a desire to do what is right. Do you have a desire to do what is right? But not the ability to carry it out? Oh, a lot of people. I think a lot of people wrestle with this. You want to do what is right, but you, you know some people need to go to rehab for that. Or whatever the situation is that you're dealing with. Sometimes you need to... Need to get help for that therapy. He says, but I don't have the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Oh, man. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Yo, I love this. I love what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, yo, I'm trying to do what is right, but I keep doing what's wrong. I'm not changing. It's this flesh. It's this sin that's in me that stops me from doing what is right. Paul even said he can't do it on his own. So I find it to be the law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. You ever felt like that before? You want to do right? Oh, but I keep, I keep doing wrong. It says, for verse, uh, Romans verse 7, verse 22, For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. He says, wretch man that I am. Paul even said, look, I'm a wretch man. 
I'm not changing. Have you ever been there before? You want to do what's right, but you constantly keep doing what's wrong? Yo, we need help to do that. And this is where the help comes in at. He says, wretch man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Then he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. So Paul said, who will save me from this body of sin? Who will help me do what is, what is right? Who will help me change? He says, Jesus Christ will help me change. Now, Jesus Christ will help you change, but you also got to want to help yourself. <laughs> it goes twofold. You know, faith without works is dead. Action speaks louder than words. You know, you get saved, God changed your heart. You get saved, God changed your heart. But now we got to want to, we, we got to want to live in a certain way. We got to want to change. <laughs> You know, and that brings me to sanctification. What is sanctification? You know, sanctification is God's will for us. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. That you abstain. This one says you abstain from sexual immorality. This is an example. The word sanctification is related to the word saint. Both words have to do with holiness. To sanctify something is to set it apart for special use. To sanctify a person is to make it holy. Jesus had a lot to say about sanctification in John chapter 17. In verse 16, the Lord says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. And this is before his request. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Verse 17. You know, in Christian theology, sanctification is the state of separation unto God. All believers enter into this state when they are born of God. You know, once you get born of God again, once you, once Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, you are now sanctified. You know, we grow. We learn. You know, as you grow in your faith, change will occur. It's, it's going to happen. It will happen. It should happen. It says, um... You are in Christ who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, And because of him you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. The sanctification mentioned in this verse is once forever separation of believers unto God. It is work God performs. God performs this work in you. An eternal part of our salvation and our connection with Christ. Hebrews 10:10 10, 10 says, And by that will we have been, and by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now, theologians, they sometimes refer to this state of holiness before God as positional sanctification. It is related to justification. While we are positionally holy, set free from every sin by the blood of Christ, we know that we still sin. All right, so even though we even though we saved, as long as you're in this body, you're going to keep sinning. You know, you may fall down, but you get up. It says a just man fall down seven times. Do not beat yourself up if you fall down. But after a while, change should occur if you... If, if you're in the body of Christ, if you're growing spiritually the correct way, change should happen. Your heart should change. You should not still have the same thoughts. You should not still have the same behavior. Your heart should change. This is very important. This is why the Bible also refers to sanctification as a practical experience of our separation unto God. Progressive or experimental sanctification, that is sometimes called, it is the effect of obedience to the word of God in one's life. It is the same as growing in the Lord. If you're going to keep growing in the Lord, you will change. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. It is the same as growing in the Lord or spiritual maturity. Are you spiritually mature? 
Are you spiritually mature? God, God started the work of making us like Christ, and he's continuing. Philippians 1, 6 says, and I'm sure of this, that he will begin a good work in you. A good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. This type of sanctification is to be swayed by the believer earnestly. 1 Peter 1, 15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy. Look, in all your conduct. <laughs> oh, man, do you, do you, your conduct, how is it? Is it holy? <laughs> it says it right here. You also be holy in all your conduct. How was your conduct? Hebrews 12, 14, it says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Look, strive for peace with everyone. Do you strive for peace with everyone? This is in the Bible. This is sanctification. Look, we get saved. All right, so how am I supposed to act now? All right, I got a new heart, but I'm still evil. I'm still mean. No, we supposed to, as we grow spiritually, we supposed to change. This is the point of my whole message right here. Do change really occur in the Christian life? Yes, it occurs, but we gotta, but as we gotta continue to grow spiritually so we can continue to change. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth. Progressive sanctification has a view that is setting apart of believers for the purpose for which they are sent into the world. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For of them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. That Jesus set himself apart for God's purpose is both the basis and a condition of being set apart. Are you set apart? Now, those who are sanctified are becoming more like Christ. Now, that more like Christ is your character, your, your thinking. You know, um, you know, Pastor Tierra, she, she said, I'll never forget her message. What would Jesus do? You hear that all the time. What would Jesus do? You, you know, your characteristics. How you respond. You know, am I changing? You know, you know, it's interesting because when it comes to change, some people like to change that, all right, my money changing. I got a, I got a new job, that change. We like all the change except characteristic change. That got to be on the top of your list if you want to change. You should want to be a better person. I want to respond differently. I don't want to be quick to react. You know, one of the favorite scriptures in the Bible, it says, uh, What's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible? It speaks about change. I had to meditate on this scripture. It says right here, a wise man keeps himself under control. Proverbs 29, 11. That talks about change. A short side. I'm going to read it from the Amplified version. But, but see, half of the Bible talks about how we supposed to, how we supposed to act. Proverbs 29, 11 says, I'm going to read the Amplified. This is me personally, what I had to meditate on. A short sighted fool always loses his temper and displays his anger. But a wise man uses self-control and holds it back. Mm. That that's talks about behavior change right there. You know, when Paul set up these churches, he had, all right, this is how we act. This is how we're supposed to act as Christians. This is how we're supposed to be as Christians. You know, this is my message for today. And my point is this. If God is changing you, act like it. Act like it. And how do we act like it? We want to make sure we have the mind of Christ. We want to make sure our behavior is just like Christ. This is how you let your light shine. When your light shine, it's just, it's just shine and says that, that, that you're walking with Jesus, that you have a relationship with Jesus. This is very important. I hope you got something out of this message today. But this was my message. This is what God gave me. You know, as a Christian, do you really change? Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. For those who are listening, if, if you're not familiar with the Bible, you don't know anything about, about the Bible, you left the church, you, you, 
you know, you had a relationship with Jesus, but you left and you, you just done with Jesus. Listen, please reach out to us. Um, the Bible says, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Sometimes we just got to take the first step. If you have any questions about the word, you don't understand something specifically, please reach out to us with all your prayer requests, any help, any updates on our website, any updates on our church community, please check out our website. Thank you for tuning in and God bless.